Uh, as thank you very much, and I'm really happy uh, to be here. And um, and it's interesting because it's a it's a, by, kilo coincidentally became a, a con, uh, the third uh, lecture after presenting uh, um, um, testimonies of survivors, and I'm actually speaking about the second generation. And their, and their representation on Facebook. Is there anyone here without a Facebook account? Yes. Me. Who? I. At. I account, yeah, she has an account. We're friends. I have an account. She has an account. I also just, I also just uh, you know, I'm uh, not uh, but, uh, but yeah, I also, I'm not also not, but you have an account. You know what is Facebook? Surprisingly, it's only even not 20 years in our life, which is quite uh, uh, surprising, right? And um, Facebook groups, yeah, is even a, uh, um, a newer thing. It's only from uh, 2010. It's like 12 years, but still, we are all very much engaged in groups. Uh, actually, each one has like between six to eight groups minimum that he's uh, engaged in. And not only this, that uh, Zuckerberg himself, you don't have a Facebook. I wish I didn't have a Facebook. Ah, okay. <laughs> and, okay, by, by the end, by the way, we're supposed to actually uh, uh, invite each other as friends after this uh, uh, meeting here. We have so many friends that we never met, but these here we at least met. But anyway, uh, Zuckerberg himself ac actually focuses on, on groups, as like he says not long ago in 2019, Facebook users are now engaging with more content from groups as part of their uh, social network shift toward meaningful communities. It means groups are not only our interest, it's also Zuckerberg focused to increase our engagement in groups. So groups are, uh, um, are happening, yeah? A, a, there's quite a lot of research of, of why uh, um, people uh, uh, participate in groups, actually all reasons are included. It's socializing and entertaining, self-status, sharing information, positive interaction, empathy, support, uh, 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 um, an effective tool of fundraising and awareness, everything is uh, in. Actually, you know, like, you know, everybody, each one to find something else. And a lot as a, as a peer community. It means there's a lot of reasons and a lot of motivations that are found that uh, uh, describe why people are engaged in, in uh, Facebook groups. So uh, um, the, the next leg or the next uh, uh, community uh, uh, offered by Facebook is not only groups, but communities. Yeah, it's a, it's another uh, thing happening in uh, in um, in Facebook. And when you talk about uh, communities, you can separate between active members, which I assume some of you are, and posters, which are the two professors here, which are actually just uh, looking at Facebook, but they're not uh, active participants. Nahon, that's what you're uh, uh, telling. And actually, uh, people are the the rate of people in a community that are active participants and, uh, and uh, uh, posters and only people that are just, you know, hanging around but, doesn't say, but don't say anything. So this uh, uh, proportion, this ratio is an indication of the community and the, the strength of the community and the effective of the community. It's a ratio that we, um, that we, that we check. Connection seekers, inclusive seekers, intention seekers, all motivations for uh, participating in group. And which I, what actually quite surprised me, it's the third place of people. We have home, work, and community on Facebook. Surprisingly, but that's what it is. It's quite it's surprising. Not, surprising. Not what? It's not surprising. Not surprising? No. No, okay. So, but, so um, and it, it, it became so serious that we have now a profession profession of community manager, right? And there's, uh, if you are on uh, marketing, you know, a database of marketing, so there is a job of community uh, manager, people that their job, what they do is actually to, to manage the community. And as I said, it's a process. You start with a page, it becomes a group, and then it's a community. It's an evolution of engagement, of size, of motivations that is happening in uh, on Facebook, and by the and, the, and your nodding, your nodding actually uh, proved the fact that we are all engaged in some kind of communities. The Holocaust here is not; we don't need to uh, uh, to explain. There are about in, in, after the war, there are um, about 140,000 people coming to Israel as uh, um, uh, Holocaust survivors. We had a, a small discussion here between, like, in the corridors about the. Uh, 
new survivors of uh, coming from Russia and what used to be a um, uh, um, uh, Soviet Union. Uh, we have to say also that survivors in Israel are well assimilated in the country. There is a big uh, body of knowledge of the contribution of Holocaust survivors to the uh, to the society, to Israel, to establishing Israel and building Israel, etc. The second generation is an issue started on the 60s, actually. It had to do with the claim for uh, with uh, uh, compensation from Germany when the compensation started to deal not only with, uh, 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 with property but, and work and uh, this, but also with mental uh, um, outcomes and, uh, of, of the Holocaust. And that's where the second generation also started to be uh, del dealt with. A lot of, uh, um, there's a lot of uh, uh, literature and a lot of art and a lot of uh, cultural um, uh, happening um, in uh, about the second generation, it started. I think that the, some people argue with it, but I think that the, what's um, the innovator was Nava Semel, that was the first one that actually published a book and uh, uh, described what it means to be a second generation. Most and and probably some of you know Yuda Poliker and Efer Avak, which is also a, a turning point in the culture, cultural and, and artistic. Uh, representation of second generation in Israel. Uh, most of the what was done by that time had to do with post-traumatic disorder, had to do with the uh, intergenerational uh, transmission of trauma, what it meant and how it felt to, to live and to grow up with parents that survived the Holocaust. That was mainly what was happening maybe even until uh, now. Regarding the literature, there are two kinds of, of researchers, research about Holocaust survivors. One of them is the, a lot of research that is comparing uh, Holocaust survivors' offspring, it means the second generation of, uh, uh, the second generation to non-Holocaust, uh, to, to non, uh, how do you call it, the control group of non-HSO. It means you compare from different aspects, you uh, compare the groups. Another uh, line of thought or line of research about the second generation has to do with differentiation in Holocaust survival, in, in what happened to your parents in the, in, in the, in, during the war, whether they were in camps or not, whether they were young or not. It means differentiation among HSO, Holocaust survivor offspring, regarding who, to what was happening with their parents. And the third, 2.1, the third line of uh, research is something that we are doing now, is actually regarding or attend, um, looking at second generation as a subjective uh, uh, perception of one on his, on, his, uh, on his self. We actually, it raised up from the, from the field after interviewing people that said that, they are an act, that were active in groups of second generation. And when you interview them, you, you, you find out that their parents were in Israel. They were in Palestine. They weren't in, the, in, the, in, in Europe, Bichlal, yeah? But they regard themselves as second generation because the families were left in Europe and the, and the home and the way they grew up had to do with Holocaust and they regard themselves as second generation. So it, so it means that the second, so being a second generation is a subjective Objective perception, or you can you can look at it as a subjective perception and not as a, an objective one of where your parents were uh, or were not um, uh, in in the Holocaust. When you look at uh, 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 HSO Holocaust survivor offspring uh, groups on Facebook, so there are two big groups. Uh, in Israel, one of them is an open group and one of them is a closed group. I didn't mention that when you, took, you, when you look about groups, so there are ones that are open that anyone can uh, participate and some that are closed that you have to get a permission from the admin to, uh, uh, to, to participate. The two groups are actually quite similar in size. One of them is 9,000, like around 10,000 people in both groups. Uh, and, and they also have a quite a similar name. One of them is second generation to Holocaust survivors, and the other one, the one that I was looking at, is yes, I'm a second generation to Holocaust. Uh, it's a closed group. I was uh, um, like, okay, I was in the... Um, and there's another group of uh, next generation to Holocaust and heroism legacy, which is a group that uh, people have to pay money in order to participate. It's a very small group relatively and not so active on, 
on Facebook. There's also a lot of small groups regarding communities. You take like people coming from Krakow, people coming from Woj, you know, like uh, or with the origin orientation, but they are much smaller and much less active on Facebook. So I was specifically looking at the closed group of uh, yes, I'm a Holocaust, I'm a second generation to Holocaust survivors. It has 9,600. Uh, um, um, uh, participants. I was assigned as an admin, which was very nice because I could see the, the, the data and the details of what was going uh, on there. Uh, I, was, we inter I, interviewed the, I interviewed some participants, I interviewed the admins of both groups, uh, uh, and we did content analysis on what's going on on this uh, group. Uh, so uh, this is, um, as I said, it's active since, 19, since uh, uh, 2014. A, a, mainly women age 65 plus. There's a, a, a daily average of six posts. It's quite a lot every day. Active rate of engagement, 77%, which is also very high. It means the rate of people that uh, uh, reply, that do like to, to, uh, uh, to post that are, um, uh, that are um, Put, that are going on. There is uh, there are there isn't any differences between uh, uh, days. A bit higher on weekends. A bit uh, increase on on uh, COVID and uh, uh, a bit of an, uh, or some increase in uh, in around the Holocaust days and the Memorial days. So this is the data, the the statistics of uh, this group. So what did we find in in this? First of all, and actually we can see it on the speakers here on the conference, that there is a second leg of second generation. People that weren't interested at all in being a second generation, and if, even uh, ignoring the fact that their parents are uh, Holocaust survivors, and I see some nodding here, because people I think that can relate to this idea, we can now see a, a second leg of second generation. People that are, were not involved in this issue for years, or in this matter for years, suddenly are becoming interested. It has to do, of course, with the, the passing away of the parents, the growing up of their own children, Children, the 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 time, the the le the leisure and the time that they have, but we see a second leg. It has to do like where's the lady with the with Aaron's uh, memoir? Sorry, like 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 he first wrote on 1945, and then there, he he himself, not a second generation, but the survivor, has a second leg of of whatever. So um, so uh, I feel towards people here. So this is uh, I, I so this is a second leg. Another thing which is interesting is the, the, the connection between the people. I feel towards people here as family. We share a common story. Each one of us had to live with their parents and their history behind closed door. It was not easy. It means people in this group have something in common, some, in a way even they sometimes treat it as a secret, of something that uh, uh, we share some common, we both know. Um, I have the same history with people I don't know. We grew up the same way, even though we are in different places. So people, people feel a uh, uh, common uh, life history, common uh, uh, youth, common uh, prob f uh, uh, facing common problems with people that they actually don't know and they share uh, uh, that um, uh, community. Uh, the understanding that a stranger will never understand, something that we both understand, but nobody else can understand. When you look at the content of, these, uh, of this uh, Facebook group, we found three uh, uh, vectors or three th main themes. The one of them, information, commemoration, and memories. Uh, one of them is information. A lot of posts there are dealing with information. Historical knowledge, reminders, today this is the liquidation of this and this ghetto, today is the, is the whatever, you know, all kind of um, historical reminders of, uh, uh, why are you laughing, uh, years ago that happened. Information regarding uh, Holocaust survivors, the, the Amcha, the, all kinds of events regarding Holocaust survivors, events concerning the Holocaust group events, and a lot about financial rights of HSO. I have to say, I just, you know, be before coming here, I was looking what's going on, if anything is new on the groups. So uh, it's always like when, uh, when somebody's bringing, or not always, but Sometimes when somebody brings up the financial issue, if there's any support or any uh, um, compensation for second generation, so a lot of times the admin take it, takes it off because they don't want uh, the group to, 
to go into this conversation of financial uh, issues, but it is uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, going up. The other uh, informa informational uh, aspect that goes in the, that you see often on the group is the commemoration, five minutes uh, commemoration. And I was worried that I won't have what to speak for 20 minutes. Commemoration of communities. We now, we today commemorate uh, uh, this, uh, um, um, the, the Litvia, the Linda, the Kovna, the uh, uh, communities. Uh, I go fast forward and the, the, uh, there's a lot of uh, personal memories that are shared there. I uh, want to, to read the, the one that is bold because uh, uh, one of my arguments with my father when I was around 30 years old, a mother of three children, I said to him, you never told me you love me. Silence. Tear, tears appeared in my father's blue eyes, and then came his reply. All those that I loved, God took, for, took them from me. How sad it is that my father was afraid to love me so, so that God would not take me from him. I found so much love and power in that sentence. I'm 71 years old today and still remember his exact words and how they made me feel. And that's, I, I don't know if some of you can relate to this uh, quote, but uh, um, 71 years old, somebody tells the story like a few months ago. So I find that there's a lot of personal memories coming up in those uh, groups. Uh, another thing that is happening, that there is, a, uh, um, especially after COVID, uh, a drift, a twist between the online to the offline. People are meeting. They even go to Hungary or Romania or to Poland together. There are trips. They're organizing trips together, and they meet. And you see here some of the... Um, uh, uh, there's a, I want to, I, I don't have time, but look, there is a, a um, Madame Dina, um, um, a, a political science, uh, um, uh, Benedict Anderson, that's, that presents a, a concept of uh, imagined communities. Uh, Imagine communities as a concept of, uh, he, he speaks about it in terms of countries, yes, but if you look and uh, uh, if you look at what makes an imagined community, if you look at his uh, list of what is an imagined community, so actually you find in this community of uh, second generation uh, a lot of characteristic of imagined community. Uh, people that don't know each other but have something in common, horizontal connection that brings all citizens together, they fight for a common, common uh, 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 agenda or common uh, uh, issue of uh, remembering, of commemoration, a, a, and uh, it also has to do with moving from, from religion to secular. I don't have time, but the fact that uh, the, the Holocaust survivors as martyrs as something holy, and now we are going in the uh, secular part of this commemoration. We also see, saw it yesterday, how the, the Miriam, right, Miriam Arel, she is kind of holy. Right? While the second generation and the testimonies are becoming more secular, we are in this shift of between secular and two minutes. And, uh, uh, and technology is a as a facilitator, also Anderson speaks about it, but we don't have time. So in a way, I see or we, we suggest looking in this co as thi at this community of Holocaust survivors offspring as a community actu actually under construction, while we, maybe there's a lot of second generation here, but the second generation actually is looking for leadership, for agenda, for all these uh, things that the country has, like Anderson su suggested, su suggested as for countries, but actually you can see mo a lot of it in this community of HSO, Holocaust survivors offspring, that are becoming now the, and we also saw them speaking, we also saw them talking the, 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 the stories of the parents. So that's it. Thank you.